Hi, uh, I'm Jason. Um, I work at GCT as the developer for Bushido. Uh, Bushido is a uh, miniature skirmish game. It's a 32 millimeter miniatures and we play on a 2x2 two two board, about five to seven models aside, and it's set in our fantasy version of Japan and Southeast Asia. So we've got samurais, we've got kung fu, we've got uh, the Shugenja, the evil sorcerers, and uh, the various monsters from Japanese folklore, which gets a bit interesting and wacky at times. And we've got miniatures for all of that stuff that you can play on the board in your warbands. Is it set in a specific period at all or is it just purely fantastical? Uh, it's it's a roundabout medieval but to be honest we, we, we don't have a lot of information about that period because Japanese sort of stayed the same for a long time and especially during the isolation period that they had where they weren't letting any foreigners in and any natives out. Uh, it's, it's quite difficult to research that, that period anyway. Makes sense. I'm just curious a little bit. So maybe it might be like Edo period or earlier? Yeah, uh, we, we've got a lot of samurai with katanas on foot rather than horse archers, so it's, it's slightly later than the start of the samurai era. Very cool. Um, can you tell me something unique about the mechanic? What makes this different yeah. from the skirmish level? What draws people in mechanic-wise is usually our melee system. We have uh, two different colours of dice, and you have a dice pool, maybe you have three or four melee pool. You're going to split those into attack and defence secretly, and your opponent does the same, and then you roll at the same time. And what this does is it means that in other systems where the person who's better at the math might just be able to win, you have to try and figure what your opponent's going to do, and so there's a bit of mind games, a bit of psychology in there. You do, does he think you're going to go all out for attack and leave yourself open and just try and kill the opponent or are you going to go 50-50 and go two dice in attack, two dice in defence and have a quite an even split so you, you don't know what your opponent's going to do so you don't know what like difficulty you're rolling against until you see your opponent's roll as well uh, once we combine that in with the special abilities that the models have and they all generate key which is our resource mechanic and they can spend that to do their feats between all those things it gets quite involved and it's sort of a very cinematic very much zoomed in on the personal combats it's not like an abstract battle game it's, it's a, a really sort of intense personal sort of scale interesting that seems appropriate to the setting yeah, when you've got a, a master swordsman samurai fighting a, an old master monk who's been doing martial arts for hundreds of years, then yeah, it's important to capture that. Hey, uh, can you tell me about the fantastical elements? Is it creatures? Are there magic users? Yeah, both. There's a lot of the Asian folklore showing up. So we have Tengu, the bird people, their classic Japanese myth about uh, half bird, half man, or possibly just spirit creatures, uh, depending on which story you read, that live up in the mountains. And occasionally they come down to guide humanity and then they realise that humanity's gone too far, so they they come down to slow them down a bit and keep them where they're supposed to be. We have the Kitsune, the, the were foxes. They can switch between their fox form and their half fox half human form and we do have a lot of magic users and even uh, like people like the samurai they still generate their key but they use them for their techniques so if you want to do a, a dokote which is a feint in kendo uh, kind of you know <laughs> you would spend your key to do that effect and you get the benefit in a combat cool. all right anything else you want to address or uh, not so much. We've got um, a lot of different factions to look at. I would encourage people to go to the website. We do have everything from pirates to the deposed ex-rulers of the Joir Isles who are now fighting a guerrilla war. All the different samurai clans. A secret society who are the cult of Uri as well as the monks and the Oni demons who are coming from another world and have teamed up with the local Bakamono to form the Savage Wave. There's, there's so much to look at. It would take me hours to go through it all. I'd encourage people to look at the miniatures on the website awesome. and if you don't like the miniatures then there's something wrong with you because we have one of the best miniatures range in the uh, industry at the moment awesome thank you so much